Uh, the title is uh, Rock Paper Scissors Creating Low Cost Devices for Environmental Monitoring and Remediation. And I'm uh, Young Jin Jo from the uh, Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department. So, this is uh, my background. Um, I joined UCF in 2002 uh, with a PhD from University of Cincinnati. Uh, my major is in electrical engineering. And the, my, I got my master's and uh, bachelor's degree from Seoul National University. And after getting master's degree, I have worked for the government research institute uh, for about the uh, uh, four years uh, prior to uh, uh, studying again at the uh, for my PhD. Uh, my research topics uh, include miniaturized sensors, actuators, and microfluidic components. And uh, I have uh, interest in integration of new and emerging materials into host device platforms for novel applications. So our lab has developed the gas sensors, uh, electrochemical sensors, magnetic microactuators, microfluid mixers, and drumnet and manipulation platforms. Uh, and then the, those research activities have been funded by NSF, NIH, STTL, as an industry uh, in the past and present. And I have a, a teaching interest in the um, uh, broadly uh, microelectromechanical systems related topics, uh, MEMS, and uh, I have a, a, a great interest in the multidisciplinary teaching and mentorship, and then always want to bring uh, most recent research outcomes uh, to the classroom. So this is the, the courses that I have taught before. I'm currently serving as uh, NSF IUCRC uh, UCF site deputy uh, director, and then we are in the phase two uh, right now. And then I'm also serving as uh, the NSF RET site director right now, and then also contributed to other uh, research and then education related activity, activities at UCF in the past. Okay, the reason uh, that I uh, titled uh, my talk uh, as a rock paper scissors is that the, um, in many cases, uh, useful uh, industrial uh, metal uh, it comes from the uh, a body of rock. And then while uh, those uh, were mined, the, uh, often the sites are contaminated. Uh, and then the, uh, this contamination uh, causes uh, a long-term uh, consequence, consequential uh, impact uh, in the area. The, Figure on the right here, show, right upper corner, shows the, uh, the arsenic contaminated site, and then those uh, uh, red dots indicate uh, those sites. And then the uh, you can see some of the uh, gross uh, pictures uh, with uh, some the uh, unintended uh, uh, the impact on the human health. So the uh, idea is to develop a low cost devices for environmental monitoring and remediation, especially for the resource limited areas. They cannot access fancy uh, uh, you know, systems or fabrication facilities uh, due to the lack of infrastructure. And in the past, uh, many research uh, ideas were proposed uh, in such a case Disposable devices were produced by sophisticated uh, specialty equipment, and then ink, uh, wax printing, 3D printing, etc. However, the uh, in this research, uh, our intention is to uh, uh, make devices out of uh, purely based on a set of office equipment: uh, laser jet printer, thermal laminator, and then craft cutter. And then with that. The materials that we have used to develop uh, uh, this uh, low-cost devices is the uh, paper and then uh, metal uh, leaflet sheet, which is uh, quite similar to the aluminum foil, uh, often made of uh, copper and then the other uh, metallic species. And then the uh, baking sheet. Uh, so in order to create a hydrophobic uh, the uh, wax transfer. So with that, we started with the paper and printed the pattern on the paper and then laminate 
those metallic sheet and then transfer. With that, we can define metal patterns that could be later used as an electrode or other functional you know, layers. And then also for the sample confinement, we need to have a, a hydrophilic, hydrophobic contrast. That contrast is made by cutting out the baking sheet uh, with the uh, craft, uh, you know, in this case, uh, this uh, craft cutter. Uh, that's why there's a paper and scissors in the title. And then the, after the patterns were cut out, uh, those were laminated with the laminator. And then the um, after that, the wax is transferred from the baking sheet to the, the paper. And then the after uh, these wax papers are uh, paper is removed, then we can get the uh, parent confined area, as you can see here. So that this is for the sample confinement. This is for either sensing or the uh, to create the uh, functional uh, areas. So one example is the arsenic capturing device uh, made on cloth. We printed the patterns on cloth, transferred the copper uh, patterns uh, like this and then the copper patterns is converted then into the copper oxide uh, nano particles uh, so that the this becomes a the uh, layer becomes a, a, a solvent nano solvent uh, for the arsenic and then when this is stacked and then the water is filtered through this low cost device then arsenic can be uh, effectively removed another example is the uh, after creating the fluidic contrast and then confinement area, we use the uh, kind of a color indicator, uh, a kind of aminosilane compound that could react to the cobalt uh, metallic ions and then change its color depending on the concentration. So you can see the cobalt detection with uh, the uh, cobalt cobalt uh, concentration range of uh, ppm and then the uh, change of color. So one of the the uh, depiction here shows that the uh, color can be captured by smartphone and then the color with the, the color coding, then the uh, uh, cobalt uh, concentration can be determined. Uh, it's a truly a low cost device. And then this uh, stand also can be uh, made out of uh, a little bit thicker paper with instruction printed. Uh, so that's our, our vision uh, in the near future. And then this uh, graph shows uh, effective removal of arsenic uh, before passing and after the passing. And this is uh, passing through the one uh, device. But if this is uh, a stacked uh, multiple layers, then the effectiveness can be enhanced even further. So result of a facile digital fabrication technique applicable to flexible substrate for producing uh, this uh, eventalic patterns and the hydrophobic hydrophilic uh, con the, uh, contrast have been uh, developed in this effort. And the only a set of office equipment uh, has been used for this. Okay, another effort in this case is uh, the development of uh, uh, the uh, sensors uh, for detecting heavy metal ions, uh, PPB level. Uh, and then the motivation is that the, as you can see from this uh, cover article of time, uh, there was a, a very well-known event, a uh, Flint water crisis that happened in 2014. And then it has a, a lingering uh, you know, health implications, especially in uh, children and in their brain development, for example, with the lead poisoning. And then this happened due to the aging infrastructure. And then in this case, actually, when they changed the water source uh, with a different pH value that kind of that eroded water pipes and then eventually uh, lead was released into the drinking water. So in view of this, uh, for traditional heavy metal detection, uh, either the um, mercury-based electrode or bismuth-based electrode were used uh, for the electrochemical detection. But ironically, mercury itself is toxic. So we try to detect uh, heavy metal, but the uh, mercury itself is uh, toxic. In the case of bismuth based electrode, bismuth is quite brittle. So the electrodes are uh, susceptible to you know, uh, mechanical uh, stress and they can, can kind of crumble uh, when we try to make uh, the uh, microelectrode. So we 
uh, try to uh, incorporate uh, kaitosan, which is a biopolymer and very, very environmentally uh, friendly material. And then we created a, a kaitosan metal composite uh, based electrode for this heavy metal detection. In such case, uh, since kaitosan is an abundant material uh, and then can be found in the shellfish, and the provide mechanical integrity uh, to the electrode uh, in connection with the metal uh, that is used to uh, enhance the, uh, uh, the uh, conductivity. Uh, and then kaitosan also has a, a very interesting uh, the capability in terms of a cap capturing a metal ions. So with that, uh, we utilize the uh, electrochemical detection method, uh, basically uh, anodic stripping voltammetry in such a case. The uh, metal is captured on the working electrode first, and then later the polarity is uh, reversed so that the uh, metal ions are released. While these are released back, then we can uh, detect the uh, specific signal at the specific voltage. Uh, with that, the, uh, with, uh, we started with the screen printing of electrode, and then the uh, kytosan metal composite could be uh, electro deposited on the working electrode in this uh, the structure, as you can see. Uh, we found a way to deposit the kytosan uh, and then metal uh, together uh, due to the, again, unique characteristics to the kytosan. Uh, which can be gelated uh, with the uh, bearing uh, PHE uh, conditions and then near to the electrode while we try to make the uh, electrode on which we try to make the uh, the, the electrode deposition, the chitonin can be uh, solidified and then they create this, uh, this composite uh, electrode. So this shows a uh, fabricated sensors here. And then although the graph is very uh, small here, then we could get the pretty linear response with the very low uh, detection limit uh, below to the regulation limit of uh, zinc, cadmium, uh, lead. We got the uh, PPB and then this uh, PPB level detection. So conclusion is that the, we could uh, make an environmental benign petrol metal composite electrode with a good electrochemical and mechanical characteristics and then PPB and sub PPB level detection uh, was possible with a good linearity. Uh, this whole effort was done in coordination with uh, Dr. Wuyang Lee's group uh, in the environmental engineering. So this is a very good outcome due to uh, this uh, synergetic collaboration. Okay, another research uh, going on in uh, uh, our lab is that the um, the nano composite uh, uh, based uh, multifunctional uh, sensor devices. So, with the background uh, in the recent re development of uh, the electronic skin and then the IoT, a lot of research uh, is going on right now uh, with the development of a multifunctional uh, for the de development of multifunctional. Uh, sensors similar to our skin, uh, you know, the flexible, and then the can sense uh, very different uh, things all, all together. And then this is also in alignment of uh, the uh, so-called more than more uh, based on the 2005 international technology roadmap of semiconductors. So the consensus is that the uh, the reduction of uh, uh, device sizes may end uh, due to the physical limitations and limitations set by the physics. Uh, however, you know, the, we can do more uh, than the uh, most prediction of uh, just a scale uh, alone, but the, we can focus more on the uh, diversification of the devices and the multifunctionality of the devices. So uh, based on the inspiration uh, and the prediction, and then this is a still actually valid uh, argument we uh, studied and then developed uh, the, the composite, uh, which consists of uh, zinc oxide, which is a, a metal oxide compound semiconductor with the band gap of 3.3 .3 electron volt, and then the, uh, which corresponded to the uh, uh, wavelength of a 73 nanometer, 
uh, near UV range. And then carbon nanotubes, which can be used as a, a collection node. Uh, so zinc oxide as a sensing material and the carbon nanotubes as a collection node of charges. And then the, the composite uh, could be created uh, based on these two materials. And then uh, this could be screen printed, uh, as you can see from here, and then used for the sensors that can respond to the uh, UV radiation and then the volatile uh, organic compound because uh, of uh, the characteristics of zinc oxide itself, which uh, can be used as actually uh, sensing materials. And then also respond to the physical stimuli uh, uh, based on the bending, we can get the signal. So you can see this, these three graphs here, down here. So sensors could be used as uh, the photonic sensor for the UV radiation, uh, chemical sensor uh, to detect the ethanol exposure. And then they also use it as a, as a physical uh, sensor uh, that detect the physical stimuli and bending. Uh, and then this shows uh, the uh, company materials created by, by this. And then in conclusion, uh, a new hybrid material framework for wearable multifunctional sensor platform could be developed. Uh, one thing that I want to note again here is that the, uh, uh, this is, uh, could be printed on the flexible substrate and then they could be demonstrate, demonstrate like this. And then we designed and fabricated a sensor that can be used for monitoring various events. Okay, near-term collaboration. As you can see from here, for any successful sensor development, and then the research domain that I have interest is at the, uh, the interface uh, between human and environment. Uh, we need uh, a lot of experts uh, who are in the physics, chemistry, and material science to understand what's going on at the uh, atomic and the molecular level. And then obviously for device fabrication and then design, uh, electrical engineers uh, contribution uh, could be uh, valuable. And then system engineering and then the computer science aspect of uh, investigation also uh, needed. As uh, Professor Ozman, uh, who presented prior to me, uh, mentioned that the AI-driven uh, uh, nanotechnology, something similar to that context, uh, probably I need some help from the uh, expert in the uh, machine learning or AI in terms of uh, uh, developing the, uh, the sensors with the optimum conditions because uh, uh, the composite materials and, and all those interactions with the external stimuli require a, a good understanding uh, and of complexities actually uh, right there. Uh, so the funding programs uh, we can find is, here is NSF ECS EPMD programs. They, uh, in general, they support the sensor technology development and the sensors for agriculture, department of agriculture, uh, and then EPA. And by the way, we have uh, one EPA uh, project going on between me and then Dr. William Lee as of now. And I want to acknowledge uh, all the collaborators uh, in the past and they're currently at UCF uh, and then uh, in the development of these sensors and then the outside, and then current and former students, and then the uh, postdocs. For the long-term collaboration, as I mentioned- One minute. One minute. Yeah, briefly, uh, my research is in alignment with the more and more diversification of uh, the devices. Uh, fortunately, I'm a part of this uh, uh, MIST center, uh, IUCRC center right now. And then the, uh, we are in the phase two, uh, looking for the phase three in, uh, in the future. And then also the, uh, all these collaborative efforts may uh, bear some fruit in terms of a center type of a, uh, a bigger, bigger uh, research proposal. So this is the end of my uh, presentation.